so uh, material scope we discussed it clearly and uh, territorial scope is something which is important for all of us to understand every law in a country has a certain boundary right so the boundary is up to the point where the law is admissible and enforceable right so the dpdp act is enforceable within all the uh, 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 indian states plus the union territories and up to uh, like uh, 12 nautical miles from the boundary from the uh, indian territory you have the law admissible correct so beyond that you do not have uh, 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 ability to enforce the law right that's where usually the law enforcement stops but uh, the privacy laws have extra territorial scope in certain cases for example in the gdpr if a foreign company is trying to uh, uh, process the european union data subjects right data and the data subject is in european union and they are trying to remotely monitor the behavior of the data subject or they are trying to do any intentional uh, uh, goods or services uh, to the european union data subject in that case the gdpr is applicable to the foreign company as well so a similar statement is also available in the indian dptp act so the territorial scope almost follows the same aspect of your gdpr territorial scope right but uh, if you go to the gdpr territorial scope it's much more deeper in terms of giving you the exact nuances in terms of what constitutes a intentional uh, uh, goods or in intentional services or intentional goods uh, action taken by the controller or processor right but the indian dpdp act we are yet to see in terms of the rules uh, giving us what constitutes because for example i set up any internet based service right uh, tomorrow i am providing a online consultation on data privacy anyone can uh, just pay me and i will give you a one hour half an hour consultation correct so in this case if i happen to cater to a european union data subject right uh, so let's let's uh, take uh, i i am catering to a european union company in that case or a data subject so in that case when i am trying to collect their information uh, because i need uh, to provide a service i need i need minimum information right of course email id will be transacted and i'll be uh, using uh, their payment and other information when they have to pay me correct so uh, in this process i am trying to serve a european union data subject for my privacy consulting isn't it so in this case uh, is gdpr applicable to us or even if you can take another simple example someone is trying to join from european union to infosec train uh, uh, they are trying to join one of this sessions so whoever has not picked up my cpp capm session of course you will have that challenge in terms of understanding it because uh, typically what we believe is whenever we process right uh, uh, european union data subjects data we have uh, a tendency to think that gdpr is applicable to us right but that's not the case because gdpr is only applicable when there is a intentional processing in 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 the virtue of giving a goods or services right only then uh, uh, gdpr is applicable to those organization also you need to understand i am sitting in india i am trying to provide a service to someone in european union so who is going to enforce the gdpr law upon me i run my consulting firm i am registered in india indian laws are applicable to me and indian laws authorities have full control over me they can do anything with me am i right they can block me they can block my uh, commercial activity they have all the powers but what about the european union authority if you say yes think about how the gdpr authority gdpr authorities will be able to enforce anything upon me so uh, the beauty of gdpr law is that it has actually called out this complexity in terms of when does gdpr will actually be enforceable or applicable in this case okay so they say you have an intention to influence a european union uh, data subject in the name of providing a goods or services right so if i start doing a direct marketing or if i start doing any specific activity to convince a european union customer through my marketing activity or by any means which it can easily prove that there was a clear intention to make uh, 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 this european data subject to buy my product or services only then gdpr is applicable to me 
now gdpr has a requirement that if you are doing any of this activity like you are not from european union but you are trying to uh, process european union data subject and there is an intentional processing so in that case you need to appoint a representative services right so what maximum they can do at their end is they can try to put an embargo on you try to caution the respective supervisory authority saying that give this uh, advisory that this company based out of xyz country uh, is is not complying with gdpr at the same time they are doing extensive transaction with the european union and uh, they they need to be they need to inform the concerned data subjects that their data is at risk so this kind of embargo they will be able to take it up but uh, uh, it's it's again uh, for a b2c it's it's okay but b2b then the european counterpart will be uh, action will be taken on the european counterpart that's that's the uh, that's the part where the european authority will have a strong hold right b2c they leave it to the risk of the customers correct so it's your call you are okay to share your data that's okay that's your data that you that's none of our business that's what authorities also think but after a point when there is a or a structured way of doing it then that's where the authorities will step in right so be mindful of what your extent of the application of the law again a very important point as a dpo you need to understand where to draw the line of what where the law is applicable and where is not so typically i used to give this example for example a european a spanish guy comes to india he comes and stays in the taj hotels of india right so during this part process of check in he has to give his passport uh, to identify himself to do the check in correct so does gdpr is applicable it's a spanish guy of course in european union and uh, he comes to india and he is staying at taj hotels so his, his his passport information is being handled here in taj hotels so is gdpr applicable to this hotel what do you think i want no. some other no <laughs> it has a global presence uh, as well right uh, that's that's okay let's let's forget about taj let's take a hotel which is just in india i i can answer that question as well jignesh but just to keep it simple as of now it's a stand alone hotel in mumbai so it's happening in india india sir applicable to taj hotels but gdpr could be applicable only in a situation where uh, uh, mr john who was traveling to india from spain was targeted with any direct marketing uh, uh, emails or any di direct marketing advertisement sent to sent to him when he was in european union okay at that point of time gdpr is applicable the moment you travel outside your european union you don't expect the uh, the gdpr is going to come and save you in different part of the world the same goes to the indian law as well indian law is applicable as long as you stay in india and the operation has uh, performed when you happen to be in india the moment you go out of india the indian law is not applicable to those processing activity see your digital marketing if it is it is not customized to anything to do with the european union segment then it's not applicable right if you do any customization uh, thinking that for a european union uh, a customer base you have to tweak your approach which suits them better or it it will have a better uh, 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 impact basis if you do those those specific changes then that's what will trigger those uh, applicability otherwise your direct marketing campaign remains the same for entire world then then obviously gdpr is not applicable so think in this way okay. practically right so uh, for example you there are 200 data privacy laws just because i do my business in internet if i start complying with each and every law around the world my entire energy effort and money is spent on compliance only am i right isn't it so that's where Absolutely. we need to be cautious. yeah we need to be cautious where someone says gdpr is applicable just because we process someone's uh, european data subjects personal data that's that's not right right we need to know how as a dpo to take uh, calls in terms of what is applicable what is not applicable all right so but also remember a very important point all these are uh, discussions are good for goods and services the moment you start monitoring a human behavior it's very very tough to prove that it's not a intentional monitoring the moment you track cookies and you try to understand the behavior pattern and try to customize 
your products based on cookies or you do any intentional monitoring of the users that's where you will definitely trigger gdpr okay so uh, uh, in to your question divakar so you uh, the to extent of your direct marketing is not but after that what you do uh, are you tracking the cookies and what you do basis that cookie information what are the further actions you do that can trigger gdpr okay just because someone drops uh, you drop a cookie on a browser okay but what you trying to do that what your what is your intention there are you trying to customize your service to that customer then obviously gdpr will be applicable right so cookies are quite dangerous topic in terms of people making some very common mistake right because mm -hmm. cookies are clear parameters that lead to your uh, uh, monitoring of human behavior right there are different types of cookies there are functional right. cookies there are analytical cookies right and that all exactly follows the direction of monitoring a human behavior correct so that's where your article 3 to b kicks in and uh, that's where you need to be careful in terms of how your cookie and trackers are established in your website 90% of the company within the european union even they are not so serious about cookies and stuff okay but uh, right. slowly uh, there are a lot of investigations which have started in terms of looking mass uh, uh, evaluation of websites generally it is not no more uh, uh, the regulators are just looking microsoft google flipkart facebook these uh, uh, cookie uh, uh, operations but uh, they are also started looking in terms of your uh, medium to uh, large scale organization even small scale organization as well right so it's important that we understand what is cookies and how we use them and what is in uh, 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 rational to that we have an excellent uh, cookie audit chapter where we discuss all these things in detail all right okay yeah thanks Jay. perfect Thank all right so uh, the grounds for processing we have in the dpdp act as two important grounds one is consent and uh, the specific uh, legitimate use which is going to be the uh, the second important broad category we are going to discuss all these things in detail so exemptions which is domestic and made public by data we discussed that enforcement timeline is yet to be uh, uh, dictated by the government 